How Leclerc's crash was double pain for Ferrari. I really cannot believe I'm having to make this video for you all right now. There I was, a smug little Matt, doing a Twitch watch along for you all. We're on Twitch now, by the way, so if you want to see our live reaction to Ferrari pain every race weekend, go follow us on there, WTF1 official. And I was sat there thinking, hey, this is it. This is the turnaround. Ferrari are on their way to three wins in a row. Game on. But no, lap 18, it all goes down the toilet as the camera pans to a red car in the wall after a driver error. Not only was this pain for Leclerc's championship hopes, but also for Carlos Sainz's race. Let me explain why. Carlos Sainz was on a different strategy to a lot of other drivers due to his grid penalties for taking a whole heap of new engine parts. Starting on the hard tyres, he was looking for a long first stint before then properly going on the attack when switching to the mediums for his one-stop strategy. However, his teammate crashed at a really suboptimal time. The crash meant that the safety car, of course, came out, giving all drivers an opportunity to change tyres in a race where the track temperature soared past 60 degrees. So it's safe to say no one was going to pass on a free pit stop for some fresh rubber. But the problem is, with it being a one-stop race, even despite the melting tyres, Sainz had to switch off of his durable hards to go onto the mediums for a blooming long stint. The reason lots of teams decided on a one-stop strategy is because the pit lane time loss had actually increased and was a full 28 seconds this year. Also, not only was Sainz forced to go onto the mediums much earlier than he wanted, but he had a massively slow pit stop and was then released into the path of Alex Albon, who had to slam on the brakes to avoid the Ferrari which then gave Carlos a five second penalty. Yes, a five second time penalty, not a five second stop and go like they told the Spaniard whilst he was driving, only for him to turn around and tell his Ferrari pit wall that it was only a time penalty. So it's safe to say it was an absolute disaster for the team in red from the moment Charles Leclerc hit the wall. It doesn't end there either. There was then what seemed to be quite a lot of indecision on the Ferrari pit wall, shock, on whether they were going to stop Carlos for a second time or try and make it to the end of the race on the yellow walled medium tyre. Now I don't mind for a second the team deciding that a second pit stop was necessary to ensure he'd make it to the end of the race, but doing so with only 10 laps remaining? I know Ferrari themselves have all the data to make calculated decisions, but the commentators, fans and even Carlos himself was questioning the late call to come in and lose so much time in the pits and not have much time to make it back up. Sometimes what is said on the computer is not the best strategy, even if all the numbers seem to point that way. I mean, it seemed like Ferrari were completely staring at their calculations and not what was going on out on track, as Carlos was told to box as he was side by side with Perez for P3. What an utterly strange sequence of events that was. Now, could they have done anything differently? Well, obviously, with the benefit of hindsight, the first thing you'd say is that Carlos would have been in a much better position had he started on the mediums. Then he wouldn't have been forced into a difficult strategy when the safety car came out. But obviously, that's just looking back at the race. It was just pretty unlucky from Carlos's side. There you have it, how Leclerc's crash inadvertently caused all sorts of problems for Ferrari. What would you have done if you were Ferrari's head of strategy? Let us know in the comment section below.